Alright guys, welcome back and in this video I want to start talking about designing the user interface. It's one of the more fun and also one of the more easier to understand topics and actually what I decided to do is instead of working anymore with this I actually want to start a brand new project so to close out of this click file close project and actually if you just close out of Android Studio like you want to start a new project so you just close out of the entire thing and then you open it back up again then what it's gonna do is it would just open up that project again so if you ever want to get back to this window you would have to click file close project so if you're trying to do that and that's why well I just explained it for you so from here what I want to do is click start a new Android Studio project and you can actually name this anything you want since we're just gonna be like um I don't know not doing anything real important to it I'm gonna name mine hand blaster because why not and all these should be good from last time click next this is still good we're still making something for the phone now instead of like last time where we chose blank activity what this would do is it would make that one default blank screen but I want to show you guys how to add activities manually so instead of this choose add no activity so when you click finish what's gonna happen is it's gonna load up and you're pretty much gonna have an empty completely empty um, project I mean it's gonna have those core files but check it out alright so when it's done setting up this is what you get now obviously if we click on project on the left hand side we can see that it does indeed have some files created for us but definitely no activities or screens anywhere and uh, well our app would be pretty stinking useless if the user didn't have any screen to look at so let's go ahead and do that first so make sure you're in Android view you can actually look at project view if you want but I'm gonna be in Android view and in your app expand that and go to Java expand that as well now remember this is where we're gonna be building that activity if you remember from last time this is actually where that file was so now if you right click it and select new scroll down to activity and we'll just choose blank activity so again once we're looking at this screen what this is is basically if we clicked blank activity whenever we're setting up our project then this is where we would be but that's how you do it manually and also whenever you add addis additional um, activities to whatever projects we're working on in the future that's how you do that so remember it now for right now this example is only gonna have one activity so I really don't need to give anything like a name because I'm not really gonna get disorganized with one activity however since this is the only activity it's very important that you choose this launcher activity now remember the launcher activity is the very first screen that whenever Android is trying to open your app it's gonna look for this so without it if you don't if you have a bunch of activities and none of them are the launcher activity then your apps not gonna open correctly so since this is our only activity we need to make it the launcher activity aka the starting point so as soon as you create an activity what Android Studio is gonna do is it's gonna create those two files for us let me make sure this looks nice and pretty for you guys alright so of course you remember that main activity that Java the brains behind it and the interface no need to discuss everything we got because you guys already know what all that means so one other thing I want to point out is you're like okay wait a minute there was one more thing you said that all of my activities had to be taken care of in the manifest so let me just look at the manifest and we probably have to do something here open this and oh check it out Android Studio actually took care of all of that for us whenever we just created that new activity again in the manifest this is where all your activities have to be declared it did everything for us pretty stinking awesome that is also another reason I love Android Studio so just close out of that and we can continue with the good stuff so over in activity underscore main dot XML the first thing I want to do is delete this little thing right here this text view so just go ahead select it like before and just delete it now just for this example um this is just to demonstrate a few things so I'll say that I'm building the very first page to the best social network ever the new boston.com not like I'm biased or anything I mean it's not even like it's my social network but anyways so what we need are a couple things the first thing is this large text alright so that's a little bit easier to read I'm just gonna 
organize everything before I start customizing any of these widgets. So drag in large text, and we'll say that this says um, like sign in or login. So this will be the login screen. So under this, of course, we need two little input areas for the user to enter their login information, an email and a password. So first, let's get that email, scroll down. It's actually under text fields. So click that if it's not expanded in for email. Just drag that over and we can tell when it's aligned with the middle because of this little green line. So drop that right there. All right, looks pretty good. Now under here, we'll have a password field. So drag that and drop it somewhere under there. Looks good. Now, of course, if I was actually designing this, then what I would do is I would have to make a little text area here that says email and password. But for right now, just demonstrating some stuff. This is, uh, you know, simple enough. Now, of course, after they're done typing in their information, they need some button to click on. So if we scroll way back up, it has, isn't way back up. It's like two inches away. But we're going to select this button and drag it right underneath here and we'll actually align this in the dead center of your app by using those little alignment things and all right looking pretty good so what I want to do now is I actually want to change the text on this right here and also on the button so again this is a login screen so if I hop over actually I'll change one this way so select this large text text view element if we scroll down to a property called text then what we can see is okay right now it's set the large text that's the text that displays what we actually want to do is click on this and we'll change it to something like sign in and hit enter so of course we can change the text that way all right pretty sweet now if we hop over to the source code view then let's go ahead and change the text on the button through here so of course right now it just says new button that's the default let's go ahead and change this to for some reason I don't like when the button text is the same as the title text so I'm gonna change this to log in alright sweet so the title says sign in and this says log in now another thing that's kind of annoying me is I hate when there's not enough space for the user to actually type in their information and these little edit text areas or inputs if you call them if you're a web designer they're kind of um, you know kind of look bunch not enough room there so what I'm gonna do is in this first one I'm gonna add a new attribute and the attribute to actually just make this a little bit wider is Android in DROID and it's width now I'll talk to you guys about um, you see that whenever you're alright I probably should mention this so when if you're a web designer you probably use um, either pixels or percentage or EM if you work with text a lot however whenever you're making apps you're gonna use these special things called DP and those are device pixels and I'll talk to you guys about the different units of measurement right now but just so you guys have a real basic understanding so if you had a phone that was high def for example so it was 1920 by 1080 or even 1280 by 720 that just means how many pixels are on there you could have um, a computer screen or a TV that's 1280 by 720 or you could have a little phone that's 1280 by 720 so if you try to work with pixels you really don't know how big a pixel is because the size of a pixel changes from device to device so if you use these DP they give you a little bit more control and again that's just uh, why we use DP for right now I'll talk uh, more about that later later it's gonna make a lot more sense but for right now, I want to change this to something like 320 dp wide. Because I know that that is a good width right there. And I actually want to do the same for this right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that, scroll down, and paste that into. So now both of these things are 320 wide, looking pretty sweet. So let's hop back over in Designer. And all right, I mean, this interface is looking beautiful right now. However, there's one other little thing that I want to point out. So select the top text view widget, the sign in title. And whenever you select it, you're going to notice that there is a light bulb on the left hand side. 
So let's go ahead and click this and find out what's this about. Okay. Hard-coded string. 